Welcome to this IEA webinar. My name is Rémi Gigou, and today I'll be introducing you to the basics of energy balances. The World Energy Balances is one of our flagship publications here at the IEA Energy Data Center, and this webinar will present some statistical concepts related to energy balances. This will allow you to understand the importance of energy balances and have a first look at their different uses. First, um, let's start with the actual definition of an energy balance as stated in the International Recommendations on Energy Statistics by the UN Statistics Divisions. Um, an energy balance is an accounting framework for a compilation of data on all energy products entering, exiting and used within the national territory of a given country during a reference period. So what this means is that basically the energy balance is the tool that brings together all information and data collected at the country level on all energy products and their flows. So knowing that, um, why do we create these energy balances? Um, the first reason, and uh, the most obvious one, is for a better understanding of the overall energy use at the country level. Um, by building the ener energy balance of the country, we can compute the total energy use. We can also assess um, the relative contribution of, different, uh, of the different sources in the energy mix. And we can also compute efficiencies of the various transformation processes, like, for example, energy generation. Um, the second reason is that starting from the energy balances and the totals we calculated, we can go even further and build high-level indicators like self-sufficiency or energy intensity, also estimate CO2 emissions, and we will discuss this uh, later on in this webinar. Um, finally, energy balances are also a great tool to assess data, data completeness and quality of the various energy statistics collected in the first place. Um, now that we know a bit more about energy balances and what they are, uh, let's have a look at the actual table and what it looks like. So here is an example of a condensed energy balance matrix. As you can see, it combines all energy products together, and we have a column for each of them, coal, oil, natural gas, etc. All these energy products are arranged under the same flows or rows, but more importantly, they are made comparable by converting all of them to a common energy unit. Um, that way, it is now possible to define and calculate total energy for each flow, and you can see this column at the right of this table. For example, we now can have access to total energy production, or also total primary energy supply, at the whole country level. This wasn't possible before, before we, did, we built this energy balance table. Um, at the IEA Energy Data Center, we also opted for a KTOE, um, kilotons of oil equivalent, as our standard common energy unit for energy balances. So all the numbers in this table are in KTOE. So now I have a little question for you. Um, do you know what value we need to go from energy product statistics to energy balances? Or in other words, to convert mass to energy unit? Is it the specific gravity, the calorific value, or the emission factor? Well, I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. OK, so as most of you may have guessed, uh, we need the calorific value of each energy products. Calorific values are typically expressed in units of energy per mass, for example, kilojoules per kilogram. And they can vary between each energy products, each country, and each flow. They also can even vary over time. Now, let's have a look at the different energy flows we have in the energy balance table. Um, as I mentioned earlier, each row represents one energy flow across all the different energy products. For example, the very first row of the balance table shows comparable energy production for all products, everything in the same unit. The table is then presented with three main blocks of energy flows. The first one is supply, then transformation, and then final consumption. Let's look at them uh, in a more detailed way. So first, um, the supply block at the top of this table is where we find all the flows of energy being supplied or exiting the country. So we have production, trade, marine and aviation bunkers, and stock changes. And all of this for all and each energy products. Additionally, 
by aggregating these rows, we can calculate the total primary energy supply of the country, which is probably the single most important row in the energy balance. We can also compute the total of all energy products by summing all the columns. This way we get high-level information like TPS, total, etc. The second block of rows, of rows contains the transformation and energy sectors. This block covers all types of transformation of one energy product or fuel into another different one. The main example of a transformation process, for example, is the generation of electricity, which transforms, for example, coal into a different energy form, electricity. In that case, and as you can see on the table, coal being the input has a negative number, while electricity, the output, has a positive one. Many other types of transformation exist as well. Oil refineries, for example, or coal liquefaction plants are two other big transformation processes. Also, the fact that we have a clear output and input allows us to calculate transformation efficiencies, which are uh, really useful to assess data quality. And now, a second question for you to illustrate the type of energy transformation we just discussed. What would be a typical efficiency for a coal electricity only power plant? 35%, 65%, or 85%? So I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. And yes, the correct answer is 35%. Typically, coal power plants generating electricity only have a rather low efficiency, usually below the 40% bar. As a matter of fact, in our latest World Energy Balances data, the computed efficiency of coal electricity only plants for the whole world is 37% for 2015. Finally, the last block of energy flows contains all the final consumers and end users of energy products. That is where you will find energy consuming sectors such as industry, transport, residential, commercial and services or non-energy use. The total final energy consumption of the country is also available, available in this part of the table in the total column. One more question for you about final consumption now. Do you know which of the following sectors is the most energy consuming at the world level? So I'll give you a few seconds. And the answer is industry, which is still the most energy consuming sector in the world, but by a very slight margin over the transport sector. As we can see on this pie chart, uh, presenting data taken from the IEA World Energy Balances 2017. So, as we can see, in 2015, with 28.9% of total final consumption, indus industry was still the leading consuming sector, followed very closely by transport with 28.8%. The residential sector completes the podium with 21.9% of total world energy consumption. So, now that we have a pretty clear understanding of what are energy balances, and how they are designed. Let's now look at some examples of how we can use them to gain more insights on energy issues. So the main idea here is that starting from energy balances data and totals, we can calculate the whole new range of high-level indicators by coupling this data with macroeconomic variables like GDP or population, for example. Um, Indicators such as self-sufficiency, energy intensity, or energy demand per capita can be calculated for each country, and this allows them to compare countries or rank them based on these indicators. This is what we have done on our uh, IEA Energy Atlas, uh, as you can see on this uh, screenshot, and it's available to everyone on our website. Um, in order to give you another example, uh, this chart shows energy intensity levels in different countries. Energy intensity is defined as TPS over GDP, and it represents the amount of energy needed to generate the whole economic output of the country. We can see that there are significant differences between countries, and as a group, um, the total of OECD countries together have a lower energy intensity than the group of non-OECD countries. Energy balances also serve at the IEA 
as the basis for the estimation of CO2 emissions coming from fuel combustion. This is achieved by combining energy balances data and IPCC guidelines. Another IEA webinar will be entirely dedicated to this topic, so I will not go too much in details here, but please refer to this other IEA webinar. Um, similarly, energy balances can serve as the starting point for a monitoring energy efficiency, as they provide final consumption for all the different end users and for all the different sectors. This will also be a topic of another entire IEA webinar, and is please refer to this one in order to see uh, and all the explications about energy efficiency indicators. Also, energy balances are also used as the basis for projections and scenario analysis, as one of their main um, advantages is to provide comparability between countries. As such, they are widely used for analysis through the IEA and in different divisions. Now about data dissemination for energy balances. Um, the IEA publishes the annual World Energy Balances and World Energy Statistics. These two major publications and databases are available in paper and PDF and also as an online data service comprising several data sets and they are published every year around mid-July. The key World Energy Statistics is also published annually as a paper booklet and an app for mobile devices and contains a summary of the most important data published by the IEA Energy Data Center. Now, if you want to learn more about the IEA Energy Statistics, we have a lot of different resources that can be helpful. You will find here the link to our IEA Energy Statistics Manual, which is available in 10 different, dif different languages. You can also visit the IEA Statistics website for a wealth of resources, including our questionnaires, glossary and documentation related to our data collection methodologies.